Let's get started in enabling PayPal in PrestaShop. The first step is that you must install PrestaShop's PayPal module. There are a few different ways a module can be installed in your PrestaShop site, whether it be by installing it from your back office in the module catalog under the payments category, or you could also download it from the PrestaShop marketplace if you have the marketplace add-on installed. And you can do that by navigating on the far left menu and click on modules and then click on marketplace. Here you can search the phrase press to shop checkout and hit enter. It should be the first search result, but it's this one here titled press to shop checkout built with PayPal. I'll be providing the link to all related resources mentioned in this video guide in the description section. It's important to have an experienced press to shop developer ensure that the press to shop site gets backed up before this change is made, as well as be able to restore a backup of the site if needed. Once you have this module installed, we can navigate to the far left menu and click on payment and then click on payment methods. You should see this defaulted above here after the module is installed. Keep in mind that if you go to the marketplace route, you must install the marketplace module and also associate PrestaShop marketplace in your back office. PrestaShop will guide you in these steps right after you install it. You must also make sure to link your store with the PrestaShop account. This module that we are about to configure will also guide you in this store linking if that's not already done. You just have to follow the step by step that it will present to you. Let's go ahead and click on configure. As you can see, I've already completed this first step shown here in the timeline of steps associate PrestaShop account. Next, let's click on connect here. This will connect a production PayPal account. And once we're done connecting that, after that, we will be given the option to connect a PayPal sandbox account if you want to use that for testing. So for now, let's click on connect and we will be redirected to PayPal's onboarding flows. Type in your password and click on login. Then you will click on allow to give PrestaShop permissions. And lastly, we will click on the button return to PrestaShop checkout to return to your store. Now we're back. If you would like to try the sandbox mode below here under the testing environment section, you can click on sign in with PayPal sandbox and then click on connect once more. And this will take you through an identical flow. But the difference here is that the word sandbox will now be a part of the URL so that you can differentiate where you are supposed to be logging into. So you can log into your sandbox account just the same and be redirected back to PrestaShop. Now that we've returned, click on this toggle on the right side and then agree to the terms that PrestaShop outlines to ensure that you are more than aware that you are about to enable sandbox mode and then click on activate testing environment. So let's get started on the setup. Click on the payment settings tab starting on the left side of the tabs menu here. For the activate payment methods section, go ahead and click on modify to the far right. We've enabled the regular payment methods as well as the alternative payment methods here as a best practice. And if you scroll down, you can also toggle Google Pay on by clicking here. To enable Apple Pay, we will click on configure Apple Pay, but we will lose the modifications that we just did, such as enabling Google Pay, if we don't first click on this save button before entering the Apple Pay configuration page. So let's click on save now. There we go, got saved. Now let's click on configure Apple Pay. Here, it will ask us to do two things, upload the Apple Pay domain association file to a specific location on your website, and also to register the domain in the PayPal dashboard. The first option requires you or a developer to upload a file that Apple Pay provides us. And then after that, we can click on check for domain association file, where it will check if you really did upload it in the designated file path that it gave you. You can see you will click on it now. It will say we weren't able to find your domain association files. And if you click on the help center articles, we can click on this setup tab and scroll down to the section titled download and host sandbox domain association file. And you can click on download here. And once you're ready to go live, you can navigate in this menu and click on the go live and you'll see this download and host live domain association file where you can click on download here and add it to your website using this specific relative path shown here in our docs. Let me show you just one example of a typical way to do this on a common control panel interface. Here is a directory view. My website lives in this public underscore HTML folder here. So that's considered my root. Here I have this dot well dash known folder, or I would have had to create one with an option such as this here and name it exactly as shown here. If I navigate inside of this folder, you will see that the Apple file already exists for me. This is where you would upload or drag and drop the file in your server at this location. If I show you my file permissions, you can see that this is able to be read by the public, which is what we need. On an Apple machine, downloading this file at times appends a DMG file extension, which you will simply have to rename the file erasing the .dmg portion of the name, leaving it without a file extension. After you successfully upload the file, click on recheck for file. 
Okay, great. So now it will say register shops as domain, and this will add your current domain into your PayPal account automatically without you having to log in manually to do this. So go ahead and click here. Lastly, click on confirm domain registry. And that's it. Now click on back to activate payment methods. Let's scroll down and finally it will let us toggle on this Apple Pay option and let's click on save. Scroll to the top and let's click on payment settings once more. The ordering payment methods will show you here the service order that the methods will be organized to your customers. So if you want to change the order that they are presented, click on modify. And it's as simple as clicking on any of these methods and dragging them up and down and letting go wherever you want the option to be presented. Once you're satisfied with your modifications, don't forget to click save at the bottom right. I won't make any changes right now, so I'll just click on this back button and scroll back to the top. Click on modify for the PayPal Express checkout section. This allows the payment to be completed in a single step on the PayPal window, allowing a faster checkout process to increase conversion. It's recommended you enable it on the order summary page, and you could also enable it on the sign up on order page and the product page and click on save. Let's click on back once more. We can click on modify for the smart payment buttons section. Here you can adjust the settings of the PayPal button shape, label, and color to fit your website's needs. Again, once you're satisfied with your modifications, you can click on save. I won't adjust it right now. I'll just click on back. Click on modify for the pay later checkout banner section. We recommend you enable it on the home page and you could also enable it on the order summary page and the product page if you want and click on save. Let's click on the back button once more. Scroll down and click on modify for the pay later checkout message section. Once again, it's recommended you enable it on the order summary page, but you can also enable it on the product page and click on save. Let's click on back once more. Scroll down to the last section titled pay later checkout button and click on modify. For our button, it's recommended you enable it on the order summary page, but of course you can enable it on the sign up on order page and the product page as well. Click on save once you're satisfied. Let's move on to the next tab in the menu here. Click on advanced settings. For the first option, we can leave the integrated car fields recommended option as is. For the manage order status, that's a press to shop specific section that allows you to change the label of each status of the order. So if it's pending, then it will be labeled as waiting for payment, but you can change it to something else and so on for the other statuses as well. I'll go back. For setup 3D secure, let's click on modify. We recommend only using 3D secure when required by the issuing bank, but you're welcome to modify this. Going back again for securely store customers' payment methods, let's click on modify and this option will allow you to securely store your customers' payment methods, allowing them to use them later on on your website with a single click without having to retype their payment information. You can enable it here if you want and click save. I'll leave it as is. Going back now, the rest of these options shown here are not configuration pages that you will see here on PrestaShop, but they are external links that will send you into the appropriate area within your PayPal account to configure settings such as the fraud settings, bank accounts, card statement descriptors, currency conversion rules, and managing your overall currencies within your PayPal account. And if we scroll to the top, it's the same for the next option. If we click on transactions, here you have an area where it will open up an external page outside of PrestaShop and into your PayPal transactions and disputes section. So they are handy PayPal links bookmarked in these module settings. If we click on manage account, that will take us back to the original page where we originally connected our production and sandbox PayPal account into this module. Once you're done testing in your sandbox, you can check this toggle off here and it will remove the sandbox outline and you will then be using the production account that you originally configured, this one here. And that's it. We have now successfully enabled PayPal in PrestaShop.